Hey everyone, and welcome to module seven, lesson four, where we're gonna finish up our gas laws. Um, so we're gonna start here with the ideal gas law. Now it says an ideal gas law follows the assumptions that are made in the kinetic molecular theory. To enhance an ideal gas, we would want a very high temperature and few moles of gas. Why? The whole thing with an ideal gas is that they do not interact with each other. And then if they do collide, they don't like react, they just boom and go off. So if I keep it at a very high temperature, they're gonna be moving very fast. And that will likely, if they do hit, that they're just gonna bounce off. And few moles of gas would lead to less collisions in general, just because there are less moles of gas. And that would enhance an ideal gas to make it better. So it says all gases that we deal with in this class are ideal gases, but gases do not behave like that for various reasons. Okay, we talked about that in a previous lesson. Uh, gases do interact with each other. They do have intermolecular forces. They do collide, and when they do collide, they lose energy. So all things like that are real gases, but we do not think it like that. Um, so we know that at STP, one mole is equal to 22.4 liters of a gas. If we are not at STP, if we are at a different temperature and pressure, what do I have to do? Well, we have to use the ideal gas law. So that's PV equals NRT, P pressure, V volume, T temperature. N is the new one here. N is the number of moles, okay, R, is the ideal gas constant. Constant, so means it stays the same, it's always. And I'm gonna give you two R's to choose from. So the first one, R equals 0 0.0821 liters times atmospheres over moles times Kelvin, or R is 8.314 liters times KPA over moles times Kelvin. So our unit here is liters times kilopascals divided by moles times Kelvin or liters times atmospheres over moles times Kelvin. So the, the moral of the story is we choose which R based on the unit of pressure that we have. So you have to just pay attention to that. Um, so whenever you're doing a question with moles, boom, ideal gas law. If we are not at STP, boom, ideal gas law, okay? So keep these things in mind. So when the temperature of a rigid hollow sphere, so remember rigid means that it does not change its volume, containing 685 liters of helium was held at 621 Kelvin, the pressure of the gas is 1.89 times 10 to the, there is no exponent, pretend like there's a three here. How many moles of helium does the sphere contain? Simple, plug in my information. Again, just without the gas laws, you know your equation, just plug in the information into the equation. So pressure, 1.89 times 10 to the third KPA. Volume, 685 liters equals N, which is what I'm trying to solve for. The R value I choose is going to be 8.314 liters times kilopascals over moles times Kelvin. And my temperature already in Kelvin, 621 Kelvin. Now, I'm not going to bore you with it, but if you do this correctly, all of your units will cancel out except for the one that you want, which in this case, N is moles. And my final answer is 251 moles. Okay. Very simple. Again, very simple. Just plug in the information in to our equation. Example two says a child's lungs can hold 2.20 liters. How many grams of air do her lungs hold at a pressure of 102 kPa and a body temperature of 37 degrees Celsius? Again, changing that right into Kelvin. And then you, we can use the molar mass of 29 grams per mole for air. So if I want to do this, I have to find the number of moles. So just plug in all of my information, 102 kPa, 2.20 liters, and 
I'm using KPA, so I'm going to use day 0.314 meters times kilopascals over moles times Kelvin, and then 310 Kelvin. So my N, which needs two sig figs from 310, uh, is 0 0.087 moles. And then I can just multiply by the molar mass of 29 grams per one mole to give me 2.5 grams of air. That's it. That's all you got to do. Very, very straightforward. Okay, next we got Graham's Law. There is an equation for Graham's Law. I'm not going to make you know it. I'm just going to have you understand the idea of it. So Graham's Law has to do with diffusion and effusion. So what are these? So diffusion is the tendency of molecules to move towards areas of lower concentration until the concentration is uniform throughout. Okay, so let's say we're in a, a fairly large room and somebody sprays perfume at the front. The person in the back isn't going to be able to smell it until it diffuses throughout the room, going from areas of higher concentration to lower concentration. Effusion is the process in which a gas escapes through a hole. For example, if you've ever taken like a helium balloon and like bit a little hole in it so you could suck out the helium, that would be effusion. So the moral of the story is here in uh, italics, Gases of lower molar masses diffuse and effuse faster than gases of higher molar masses. So basically, the fatter it is, the slower it is. So Graham's law of effusion states that the rate of effusion of gas is inversely proportional to the square root of molar mass. That would be like the equation that I'm not having you do. Again, moral of the story, the bigger the particle, the slower it will effuse. Now, I'm going to include a video demonstration of a gas diffusion. Um, in the resources below in on the presentation page. So please look at that, give you a little more uh, understanding. And then the last one we're going to do is referred to lovingly as molar mass kitty cat. Uh, it has to do with density of a gas. So if you wanted to find the molar mass of a gas, we can rearrange the ideal gas law in order to do so, and we get this equation. Um, MM so molar mass is equal to DRT over P. So D is density. Well, here, let's see. MM is molar mass. D equals density. Now, density for a gas is usually in terms of grams per liter. Please keep that in mind. R is still our ideal ga gas constant. Ugh. Ideal gas constant. Uh, T is temperature, P is pressure. Okay. Now, the reason why it's called molar mass kitty cat is because, like here, oh, look at their kitty cats. And what do kitty cats do? They put dirt over their P. If it helps you remember, DRT over P, whatever. Those are terrible kitty cats, so I'm just going to erase that. And you get the idea. Or forget I ever said that and just remember what the equation is. So um, the example here, what is the density of a gas for uh, with a molar mass of 100 grams per mole at half of an atmosphere, 27 degrees Celsius. Okay, I'm going to change that to 300 Kelvin. And just plug in my information. I know it's a hundred. I'm going to put a decimal here again to give me three sig figs grams per mole. My density is what I'm solving for. The R, again, I'm using atmosphere, so I'm going to use 0 0.0821 liters times atmospheres over moles times Kelvin. Uh, temperature, 300. I'm going to put a decimal there again so I can get three sig figs. And then the atmosphere is 0.5 atm. Doesn't matter because my final answer is going to have one sig fig from my pressure and the density, grams per liter. Whoops, I guess you would want a number. It's two. And that's it. And that would be the density of a gas with a molar mass of 100 grams per mole at half an atmosphere and 300 Kelvin. 
All right, that's it for the notes. I know this lesson was a little shorter, but you're gonna have more practice with your ideal gas law. Um, gives you extra work time, really. So if you have any questions, please put them in the chat. Um, I'll be happy to help and I'll see you later.